Hello, here we are again today. I'm going to look at Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole world had had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain of Shema and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. And they used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it's called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the earth. This is the account of Shem. Two years after the flood, when Shem was a hundred years old, he became the father of Arphaxad. And after he became the father of Arphaxad, Shem lived five hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Arphaxad had lived thirty-five years, he became the father of Shelah. And after he became the father of Shelah, Arphaxad lived four hundred and three years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived thirty years, he became the father of Eber. And after he became the father of Eber, Shelah lived four hundred and three years and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived thirty-four years, he became the father of Peleg. And after he became the father of Peleg, Eber lived four hundred and thirty years and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived thirty years, he became the father of Ru. And after he became the father of Ru, Peleg lived two hundred and nine years and had other sons and daughters. When Ru had lived thirty-two years, he became the father of Sarug. And after he became the father of Sarug, Ru lived two hundred and seven years and had other sons and daughters. When Sarug lived thirty years, he became the father of Nahor. And after he became the father of Nahor, Sarug lived two hundred years and had other sons and daughters. When Nahor had lived twenty-nine years, he became the father of Terah. And after he became the father of Terah, Nahor lived a hundred and nineteen years and had other sons and daughters. After Terah had lived for seventy years, he became the father of Abram, Nahor and Haran. This is the account of Terah. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor and Haran. Haran became the father of Lot. While his father Terah was still alive, Haran died in the Earl of Chaldeans, in the land of his birth. Abram and Nahor both married. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, and she was the daughter of Haran, the father of both Milcah and Iscah. Now Sarah was ba Sarai was barren, and she had no children. Terah took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, the wife of his son Abram, and together they set out from Earl of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. Terah lived 205 years, and then he died in Haran. That's the end of our reading for today. Um, another great reading from, uh, from Genesis. The beginning part of Genesis chapter 11, we read, uh, interestingly, that the people there wanted to build a city. 
and as part of the city they wanted to build a great tower, a tower that would reach up to the sky. Interestingly in verse 4 of chapter 11 it says this, Come let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we can make a name for ourselves. And I was interested when I read it, thinking about myself and perhaps you, that we've got to be so careful that we don't live our lives as Christians so that we can make a name for ourselves. The most important thing is not making a name for ourselves, but making Jesus known. Making Jesus known within our families, within our work environments, and within our social environments. Let the world see Jesus and let's make Jesus known. We receive him and believe him and accept him and then we can make him known to those that we know. The rest of the reading is uh, a whole series of names uh, that goes through all the way through to Abram and Sarai and then over the next few chapters we'll be reading more about them and how God uses them and how God works in their lives. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, have a great day and uh, I'll speak to you again on Monday. All the best. Bye then.